I'm back with another thing that really blows my mind when I transition from America down to Australia. Property. Property is all the rage down here in Australia. It's really what everyone is pushed towards. This might sound a bit funny because I'm here temporarily, but Australia imported almost 3% of its total population last year. 700,000 people. And the crazy thing is that there's a housing crisis on. So if you think about it, what's going on in the country here is that the Royal Bank of Australia, the equivalent of the Federal Reserve in the US, when they consider interest rate hikes to keep in pace with the Fed in the US, they have a choice. Do you keep Australian property prices up or do you let the Australian dollar fall? Well, every time to date, and if you look at a map of how many of the MPs own multiple investment properties, they choose the property price thing every single time. And I don't think it's going to be before the entire economy starts to have a really, 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 really bad time that they might consider doing anything that is not pro property. Now, it's been an interesting time for me down here. It's been over five years that I've been here. And being a renter here, I find incredibly dehumanizing. I've been obviously living in some random person's investment. Now, with my investments, so my stocks don't have to send me quarterly pictures of their toilets. That's something that's expected of me here. Now, I don't personally have to do this. Some person comes into my house every quarter to do it on my behalf because I'm the product. Now, this is an interesting thing because in Australia, you're pushed to buy property. That's the first thing you do. You don't invest in the market. Wait, you do, the property market. You don't invest in the stock market. Australia is not pushed to do any business innovations. Australia has only produced $2 billion tech unicorns, Atlassian, which has moved to the US, and the second one. So it kind of shows you that the crazy tax structure in Australia really pushes property because the property prices only go up. So you have these people in the 90s that bought a house for maybe 100K. So you have a school teacher bought a house for 100K in the 90s, right? And now I'm talking only in Australian dollars. So 100K in the 90s, now the place is worth $1.4 million. Let's say it's in Sydney because they have seen some houses like this, which is crazy to me. Now the school teacher probably still makes about what you made in the 90s, maybe a bit more. But the property, in my opinion, is not an asset unless it produces a positive cash flow. Now this gets into the most foreign thing to me as an American. So in America, we have 30 year fixed loans, which are owned typically by Fannie and Freddie and that's how it works. So we're gonna use Australian terms now, but in the US, your property has to be at least neutrally geared. So it has to break even every month. It normally has to be positively geared, or you need to sweeten the deal, You know, bring more equity in, larger down payment, change the deal around so it's more positively geared. Now in Australia, negative gearing is all the rage. So if you want a fixed rate mortgage, you can lock in maybe five years of your 30 year mortgage. So we're basically talking a five year balloon on a 30 year loan. And with that balloon, you're going to have a higher rate than the prevailing rate. Otherwise, everyone's interest rate goes along with whatever the RBA does. So you can kind of see, this is an interesting one, where if everybody doesn't have fixed rates, how does this work? Well, they have this thing called negative gearing. And negative gearing is where if your place is running at a loss, you can take that loss and literally deduct it from your ordinary income. So you have people, basically it's, it's monopoly. It's literally monopoly. So you can go take the equity from one place because essentially what's going on here is bank sponsored land speculation. The houses aren't really built with a huge amount of quality overall. Nothing against any builders but the houses aren't built with much quality. It's all land speculation. So what's going on here, if you're ready to put on a tinfoil hat, it's actually quite fun because if you talk to Australians about this and they're like, oh, it's not about property, you ask them what their super is. So the retirement accounts, what's your super? Well, it's a probably about 15 or 20% banks. So even if you don't wanna pay into the property Ponzi and you don't have a fetish for property, you are still paying into it by sponsoring it via the banks. So the entire system is literally predicated on the property prices continuing to go up effectively to the moon. 
So this last year with the record migrants, the situation is quite dire if you're a renter. So many states were talking not 10% vacancy, not 1% vacancy. We're talking a tenth of a percent vacancy, 0.1% vacancy. So you're gonna go to something, and I'm sure you've seen videos online, you're gonna go to some open house and there's gonna literally be a hundred people you're gonna be competing against. Now, because the supply side of the equation is not going to be rectified quickly because of all the rules and how expensive all the trades are and how expensive the councils are, the local government is, all of that stuff is so expensive, the supply side is not getting fixed. So importing a bunch of people from overseas and bringing in more demand, well, I guess they're not trying to alleviate the problem. They're trying to pump the prices up, Never mind. When you think about it like that, it makes a lot more sense. What do you think this means for everyday Australians? You should leave a comment. I think that you should hope you're not a renter and that you bought a house in the 1980s because then you'd be laughing. The property fetish will continue until morale improves. Where do you think this property situation is gonna end? The only thing I can see that will cool off this market is when the baby boomers are not the largest voting block. Now I have to hand it to them. When it comes to Australia, the baby boomers have gotten a lot done. So you can see they were the biggest voting block that's ever existed in a democracy. And the amount of stuff they've gotten done in Australia in the last 50 years is absolutely impressive. Now it's normal that every generation votes in a self-interested way, but you now have a case study for what the largest voting block, baby boomers, could get done across 50 years. And they've pulled the ladder up behind them. If you're not already on the property ladder, you're going to literally need your parents or your family to give you equity that they've earned from their property to let you get onto the ladder. So the ladder has been pulled up and I'm really interested to see what happens in the next 10 to 20 years in Australia, because I think a lot of the properties that are currently being held by everyday investors, so, you know, normal people that only have, you know, five or so properties, I don't think all of them are going to be casually handed down to their children if they have children. And I really don't know what that's gonna do to the market. Now, baby boomers are living much longer than they were expected to, based on when they were born. And so that's making their kids be in their 50s maybe. So now you have situations where you're getting your inheritance, but you're already middle-aged or retired by the time you get it. And that's layering on extra challenges here. Where is this all gonna end? I don't know. I've been waiting for the property bubble to kind of pop or you know, do something besides just doing this, but it hasn't happened. So they've pulled every single lever and they keep making new levers up. It's impressive. It's like a 3D printer or they're stapling stuff on the side of the house and pulling more levers. I'm impressed and I'm always intrigued to see what they pull out next. Queensland's doing some cool stuff. They're making it basically, so if you're gonna buy a house, they're changing it so you get an extra 30K and all that's gonna do is jump all the prices up 30K. What a good time. No one could have seen this coming. This is the kind of stuff that all seems very short-sighted, but you have to think about it like the property prices are going to appreciate because the entire system needs them to. The whole thing feels pretty unsustainable to me. If you wanna talk more about this, you should jump in my Discord. I love talking about this and all the other Australian topics that I've shared. When you're ready to move to emotional intelligence, you can check out this playlist up here, or if you're already an EQ rock star, you can get started with social intelligence or SQ at this playlist down here. We'll see you next time.